Today we're going to discuss some of the basic settings in Carlson Serve CE. For this presentation, I will be using Serve PC, but the setting menus we will look at will be the same. So what we've done so far is we've simply created a job. When you're done creating a job, the job settings window will pop up for you. In this case, because my job is a GPS job, the prompt for first point is grayed out. This is determined by your equipment settings. A couple of things I have changed though is one, um, we've got prompt for units so that this window always pops up and it asks us these basic questions. I do not check use last job jo localization because I don't want it to pull a localization from a different job into this one. The same with the control file. I don't want to pull a control file from a different job into this one in this case. Cut sheets. This is something I always change. When you first get Serve CE or Serve PC and open it, it will be set to manual. I always like to set it to auto save by job and date. That way, once I start staking out, it will automatically create a cut fill report for me that can be opened up in Excel, saved by the job's name and by the date. The date is important so that if I do a job a second day, I have a new cut fill report with that date on it. The system tab. This is where you choose your units. Decimal feet, feet inches, and so on. Uh, degrees, minutes, seconds. These are all pretty standardized things. You will have the option to pick your projection. If the projection for the state plane coordinate system or the UTM system or any other system is not listed in your drop down menu, you can go to edit projection list and you can add a predefined. Here you will have a lot of different options you can choose from, a lot of different coordinate systems you can set up. For now, we're going to leave it where we are here with the Georgia West coordinate system. Under format, again, more format options, northeast, east, north, etc., etc. Pretty straightforward stuff here. The options area. This is where we have to change a few things. If we wanted to use a control file for this job, we would click this and then we would select another coordinate file or, or another Carlson job file that has the control points in it we want. I'm not going to use that in this case. Down here we have some job settings. Most of them are pretty self-explanatory. We've got timestamp each point and that, that will occur in your raw file. I always check stored GPS accuracy in raw files. I use a code table for my descriptions. I want to recall and auto load pretty much any of my last items so I can recall world image should I have one. I want to be able to import DXF, DWG, and Esri files and options. I want my default cut fill sheets to be CSV files. That way they can open in Excel. Um, allow stake nearest points from point list. Um, that way if we're do, we are staking out, we can have the option to the stake to the nearest point. The confirmation, I leave that off. It's completely up to you, but it's basically just confirming that you're going to stake the next, that point next. Allow navigation and store points. Some data collectors like the Scepter 2, this does not work on because right now Carlson has a screen issue. But what this allows you to do is navigate two points or to a line in your store points screen. It can be very helpful if, for example, you're trying to flag a boundary line or something like that and you don't want to go into a stake line screen. Instead, you want to stay in your store points screen. This helps also on the Scepter 2, uh, auto fitting the positions and the measurements, use smaller display. Those are both for some of the uh, keyboardless data collectors so that the information fits properly on the screen. Apply GNSS analysis to average GPS points with identical IDs. Um, this is so that if we're storing two points with the same coordinates, we can do better than a pure average. We can do a, an analysis, almost a least square adjustment type procedure on those GPS points. So you want to have that checked on, I would guess. Under stake, here we can set the precision of our stake out. Um, three decimal points is more than enough with GPS, but we'll leave it there. Nonetheless, it can't hurt to have more, really. 
Um, we can uh, use automatic descriptions. What this will do is if we're staking point 0.110, it'll say stake point 0.110, cut fill 1.3 feet or whatever the case is. In here, we can set up customizations to our cut fill sheets, but I don't normally play with those. They're pretty good as they are. So let's just say that's good for our job settings. The next configuration we want to look at is under equipment. Under equipment, um, depending on what configuration we have, we will have different options under number under configure. Let's start with the general tab. A couple that I always like to have checked on, store fixed only, prompt for total station setup. In this case, we're using GPS, but still we would want this if we were working with a total station. Prompt for height and description. This gives me the opportunity to put my description and code in after the shot. Prompt for point notes. I don't normally use that. That makes it so that every time you put a store point, it pops up a window asking you to put a note with it. 3D mode is something we um, definitely want to be in, but you can click that off if all you care about is 2D. We're using a virtual keyboard because we don't have a keyboard on our desk on our um, data collector. Use graphic icons and survey. I prefer the um, OSR read store options as opposed to the graphics, so I leave that off. Audible alerts. I like the little beeps telling me what's going on. Um, we can use alphanumeric as opposed to just numeric. Point symbols, if you have your point symbol library loaded, you can see those in your map screen. Attach photos to point lines, a new feature in Carlson Surf CE 3.0. If you have a camera in your data collector like the Scepter 2, we'll be able to add photos to those shots. Uh, we want to see our average statistics whenever we do average a point, um, so that's nice to have. Down below, um, number of readings to average in a total station, we're just going to do one. In GPS, though, some people set this as high as 180 uh, following the NGS guidelines. I like to use the average button instead of the normal shot button for that, so I leave that at three. And then in our case, we're going to have our F2 button on the Scepter 2 set to be an enter button, and we want to be able to read and store with those. Under view. This is where we set up how our stakeout is going to work. We can do a number of different things. A lot of times GPS will be set to north, south, east, and west. I like in, out, left, and right. The advantage here is I can then choose a reference object. It can be my base station if I have a base station. If I don't, I can choose a point from my point list of points I shot, and that way I'm going in, out, left, and right to that point. For me, it's a lot easier than remembering where northeast are, south and west are. And we're going to move relative to our rover as opposed to our reference object. So when we say to go left, it's our left. It's not the base station's left. Sets really don't apply to GPS, so I just kind of leave the defaults here and I don't worry about it. So that's it for right now for the basic settings, um, serve CE and serve PC. Thanks and... Hope you enjoyed this presentation.